Personally, I mourn videos. I mean, good old VHS videos. If you're revoltingly young, this is a VHS, and it's what we used to get films on back when they were mainly documentaries about what the dinosaurs were up to. But look at it, it's, it's clearly so much better than a DVD. Yes, it's bulkier, and yes, sometimes the machine ate the tape, but mainly it didn't. Whereas DVDs are always getting scratched and broken and skipping over damaged areas, which I know I bloody well didn't put there. Plus, they're much harder to use. You can't just fast forward them, or at least you can, but on my machine at least, only by awkwardly holding down the button you use to skip forward, which means you're pressing the forward button longer in order to achieve a smaller movement forward, which is counterintuitive madness of the sort which I don't believe it's an exaggeration to say will surely destroy us all. And why do we have them? Because the picture quality is so much better. Well, really, who cares? Picture quality doesn't stop anyone enjoying anything if the thing is good enough. The terrible picture quality never stopped people finding Casablanca moving or Steptoe and Son funny. It didn't even stop them finding life on Earth fascinating. Nice though I suppose it is to be able to see every parrot's nostril in more recent wildlife programs. In fact, with the rise of YouTube and smartphones, more people are enjoying things regardless of picture quality than ever before. You may well be watching this on a phone or a tablet or in a tiny box on a screen at work, most of which is taken up with a huge spreadsheet denoting how much money your company is making selling landmines. Possibly. Anyway, if you're watching it on a widescreen TV in HD, it'll be being spoiled because you'll be unable to focus on whatever I'm going on about because you'll be so hypnotised by the weird patina of my wrecked dermis. No, picture quality is something that only really matters to the sort of people whose job, unluckily, is building the machines the rest of us use. That's the problem with machines. They're designed by people who love them. Geeks like new features. General users do not. But because few companies are inspired enough to put a couple of Luddites on the design committee, the picture quality chasing, button loving gadget designers are given free reign. And the rest of us have to put up with remote controls studded with a couple of hundred buttons, no more than 10% of which we have the least idea how to use. And it's also why machines now... pause. In the old days, machines knew their place. They couldn't do much, but what they could do, they did as soon as you asked them to. Hit eject on a tape cassette deck, and the machine practically spat the cassette into your face. So eager was it to comply with your wishes. Tell your computer to 10 print hello world and 20 go to 10, and that is what it would unhesitatingly, if uselessly, do. Now, we submit our request to the machine and anxiously await its response. Computers, DVD players, even light bulbs all take their own sweet time to consider what we've asked them to do and decide if it fits in with their current plans for the day. They're now on the level of a governess or a sergeant major during officer training. Nominally inferior to us, but actually very able and willing to make our lives absolute hell. Which describes my printer to an absolute fucking T, incidentally. And how do we describe this process, this maddening pause? We say the machines are thinking about it. I don't like the idea they're thinking about it. I only ever wanted a robot slave. The last thing I want is a robot colleague. <laughs>